Good morning. I want to uh, welcome you all to worship this morning, whether you're worshiping with us here in the sanctuary or you are joining us through the live stream. We're glad that you are here. I am uh, Reverend Lynn Bunyak. I'm the uh, Vermont Conference Minister for the UCC in Vermont. Um, and want to just simply remind all of us that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're always welcome here. Let us worship. Good morning. My name is Bev, and I am your worship assistant this morning. Um, please join in the call to worship. Your words are found in the bold. God rules over the nations of the earth, peoples of the Pacific, families on farmlands, all worship God Almighty. This one is God of our ancestors and our descendants. In Jesus, we are connected to one another in a vine of covenant. Bear and share the fruit of Christ's love that we may proclaim a just world for all. Let us join together singing, Dear Lord, Lead Me Day by Day, found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 411. Let us join together in the prayer of the day. Help each of us, gracious God, to live in such magnanimity and restraint that the head of the church may never have cause to say to any one of us, this is my body broken by you. Amen. So as we prepare to uh, share God's peace with one another, would you also first look at the camera and wish peace to those who are joining us in that way? Peace. peace. All right. May peace be with you. Let us offer signs of peace.
that? No? Okay. Is this on? Oh, hello. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I would like to invite all the young people and anyone who is young at heart to come join us for the children's message this morning. Sunday is Pacific Islander and Asian American Ministries Sunday. And I have a special treat to share with you. Okay. I brought some fruit. Yeah. Now, <laughs> these are some different types of fruit I know that I wanted to share. And I think you know what this is. What's this called? Coconut. This is a coconut. Okay. Anybody know what this is? Does anybody know what this is? Orange. It does look like an orange. No, peach. No, peach. Not a peach. Mango. Not a mango. Asian. It's an Asian pear. Oh, oh, have you ever had an Asian pear? Have you have? They're yummy, aren't they? Yeah. All right. Orange. Anybody know what this is? Potato? It does look like a potato. No. Kiwi. It's kiwi. a kiwi. That's I right. Have, I have kiwi. Now here is an interesting one. Dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. Wow. <laughs> Take a bow. <laughs> this is a dragon fruit. Does anybody know, can you guess why it's called a dragon fruit? No. What do you it think? Looks like dragon skin. Yeah. It, is that what you were going to say? It Great minds think alike. Points. It does have it, little points. Have little points. They do have little points. They look like scales. All right, now. What is this thing? Mango. This is a mango. That's right. I love mango. And does anybody know what this is? An avocado? Not an avocado. Pear. Pear. Not a pear. Cobbler pie? Papaya. It is. What was it? Papaya. 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 That's right. Papaya. So we have some. You were. So, we have all these very interesting fruits. Does anybody know what they all have in common? They're all fruits. They are all <laughs> Yes, you're absolutely right. They're all fruits. What They're else? They're kind of juicy inside. They are juicy inside. In fact, if you take the coconut and listen, listen carefully. Listen, ready? It has coconut water in it. All right. But what do they all have in common? What else did, yeah? Um, they all taste good. They all taste good. Yeah, and you're going to get to taste them Yay. after yes. church during yes. fellowship hour. Okay. Kiwi! But <laughs> what else do they have in common? Any other, other guesses? Yeah? They're all different, like, some people don't even know because, like, you don't really see them at schools that much. They're not as... Not they're not as common in our stores here in the United States. So in the United States, they're all common in the United States in rareness. <laughs> they are all common in rareness. Well, does anyone know where these grow? On a tree? On a tropical island? Florida. Florida? This grows in Florida. It grows in Florida? Yes, you do need water and sun to grow. But I bet you did. They're all over the place. They also grow in Hawaii. And the rest of these um, fruits, they grow in Asian countries. Now, Asian countries. Where in the world is that? Asian, right here. Whoa. <laughs> So this is a different map. What do you notice about this map? Here, can you sit down for a minute, please? It is small. What else? Um, can you? It has all kinds of countries. It has all kinds of countries, yes. And where's Russia? Oh, right my. there. It's the biggest one. 
Yes. Now, this is a Pacific-oriented map, which means that the Pacific Ocean is in the center. Okay? So, where is the United States? Where do we live? You see it? Right there. That's right. So, where are the Asian countries? Oh, not Australia. There's China. Yep. And see this little island right here? That's Japan, the pink one. And Hawaii is right here. And these islands right here are the Pacific Islands. Because they're in the Pacific Ocean. That's right. So, all right. Which of these fruits? Now, I have a question for you. All of these fruits grow from the, in the ground, right? OK. One of them grows on a vine. Which one do you think grows on a vine? The dragon fruit? No. <laughs> it's the, uh, the dragon fruit got a little smushed. Not the pear. Does anybody know? Which of these tropical fruits grow on a vine? Oh, Mark? The kiwi. That is correct. That's right. The kiwi grows on a vine. What are some other fruits that grow on a vine? I thought they grew on bushes. Nope, that's a pear. We're going to put these back in here. Okay, now what other fruits will grow on a vine? Which ones do we more commonly use? Grapes. I heard grapes. Maude said grapes. And we have grapes. <laughs> and we have a tomato. Now, I want you to take a look at this tomato plant. What do you see? It had multiple tomatoes. Like the, we can see where the other tomatoes were. They, like raspberries? No, not quite like raspberries. But look carefully at this. This part right here, see the part that's got all the branches that come off of it? This is called the vine. That's the vine. And then these are the branches. Now, where do the fruits grow? On the vine or the branches? On the branches. Now, look at this one. Do you see the same thing? Do you see the vine? We don't. Right here. And then the branches. Where are the branches? I don't know. Yeah. They're right here. Where, and where do the fruits grow? At the end of little branches. At the end of the branches. That's right. So there aren't. That's right. She's noticing that the the um, tomatoes have little star shapes that the fruits grow off of, and the grapes don't. And that's okay. Now. I have a Bible verse that this connects to. Does anybody want to volunteer to read it? You want to give it a read? Okay. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will proceed much fruit. Produce much fruit. Nicely job, thank you. So, I am the vine. Who's the vine? Me. Jackson. <laughs> it says, now listen again. I am the vine and you are the branches. God Who's the vine. Who? There it is. All the people on earth are branches. <laughs> if I could drop this mic, I would, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> All right, so God is the vine and we are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. I don't get the fruit part. Oh, I get it. I, I am so glad you said that. Because, well, if we are the, well, not quite. If we are the branches, what's the fruit? What do you think? No, nope, God's the vine. Um, closer. Not our heart, not our souls. The actions that we do and the, the, the ways that God works in us produces the fruit, okay? 
So things like being truthful, being kind. What else could we, what other fruits could we produce? What do you think? Um, strawberries. Uh, <laughs> yes. Farmer. If you're a farmer, absolutely. Producing food, fruit. Um, what'd you say? I think you said trustworthy. Yep, trustworthy. Those are all helpful. things that help and helpful. Now, we're going to do a little experiment. Okay? We are going to pretend this is the vine. Now, what part of our story is the vine? It is a charging cord. You're right. And I have some very excuse me, interesting fruit. I have, th now this, wait a minute, That's wait a minute. This first fruit comes out in the summer, mostly. That is not edible. It's called the fan fruit, and it has a nice long branch. Who wants to hold the fan fruit? Me. Okay. I hold the fan fruit. You can work, hold it together. Uh, let's see. This next one is a unique fruit can I hold because it? the branch is inside the fruit <laughs> and it grows. You want to hold that one? Sure. Okay. Let's see here. We've got, oh, this one is an, a very unique fruit it's called the lamp fruit. Who wants to hold the lamp fruit? You want to hold it, Pierce? He's holding out for something more interesting. <laughs> Maude, you want to hold it? No, Luke, you want to hold it? There you go. All right. I have, now this is a very rare fruit that only comes out one time a year. It is the treetop star fruit. <laughs> you have, you have the, um, the hair dryer fruit. And then the last one, See if I can reach it back here. Toilet paper brush fruit? No. We have a huge tree fruit. I want that tree fruit. Okay, Pierce. Now, well, let's line up up here. Why is the tree fruit so Maude doesn't have one? That's okay. Uh, Maude, can you, Maude, would you help uh, Pierce with his tree fruit? No? You're going to want to watch? Okay. Now, let's all line up here. And go ahead and turn your fruits on. Wait a hmm. Well, wait a minute. You're all all your fruits have branches, right? Oh, look at what we're doing up here. Maud, would you hold the vine? Oh, you have the dog. Okay. So let's hold this up. Okay, so what happened when you plugged the branches into the vine? They started to grow technically. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yes. <laughs> now, so, so what happened, friends, when you plugged in the branches to the vine? Woo! It, did they start to work? <laughs> they all started to work. So, when you stay connected to God, that is God. The power strip is God. The cords are the branches. And we have beautiful fruit to remind us that staying connected to God produces beautiful fruit. Now, it's time to turn all of your, fruit, your fruits off. Here, I'll just do it here. There. <laughs> 
And as a reminder, okay, you can sit back down. Have a seat. You can just sit back down. There you go. Now, as a reminder of the fruit that you are taking out with you into the world, because you are connected to God, I made you some fruits. And they're really funny and silly because they all have vines, but most of these fruit don't grow, grow on vines. We have Kindness. Who wants a kindness blueberry? There you go. Yeah, did you get some kindness? We get a generosity blueberry. There you go. We have a helpful apple. Who wants the helpful apple? Okay. Yeah, let's let's spread them out, okay? Ooh, a truthful apple. Oh, a loving orange. Who wants the loving? There are not cherries, I'm sorry. We've got a faithful banana. Faithful banana. <laughs> we got a friendly banana. <laughs> let's, let's make sure there's enough for everybody. There's a caring orange. There you go. We have honest grapes. Ma, do you want some honest grapes? No? Okay. And we have brave Great. I want some bread grapes. Okay. <laughs> Ma, did you want to have one? Yeah. All right. Now, before you go to, to Sunday, friends, we're going to practice generosity and do the birthday bank. So, will you all help me sing the birthday song? It's going to be, the words are going to be up on the screen. If anybody who has a birthday in April... Hold on, hold on. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> if anyone has a birthday in April or loves somebody who has a birthday in April, I'm going to put the birthday bank right here. And I invite you to come up and, and contribute to the birthday bank. Those monies go towards our quilting ministry. All right. Maestro. Friends, you may go to Sunday Friends. And don't forget, after church, we're going to be sampling these exotic fruits. So, you can, you can take one. And unfortunately, I have no props this morning. <laughs> Our first reading comes from Acts chapter, and, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. An angel from the Lord spoke to Philip, At noon, take the road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he did. Meanwhile, an Ethiopian man was on his way home from Jerusalem, where he had come to worship. He was a eunuch and an official responsible for the entire treasury of the Candace. Candace is the title given to the Ethiopian queen. He was reading the prophet Isaiah while sitting in his carriage. The spirit told Philip, approach this carriage and stay with it. Running up to the carriage, Philip heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you really understand what you're reading? The man replied, without someone to guide me, how could I? Then he invited Philip to climb up and sit with him. 
This was the passage of scripture he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was taken away from him. Who can tell the story of his descendants because his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, about whom do the does the prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or someone else? Starting with the, that passage, Philip proclaimed the good news about Jesus to him. As they went down the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, water. What would keep me from being baptized? He ordered that the carriage halt. Both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water where Philip was baptized. When they came up out of the water, the Lord's spirit suddenly took Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip found himself in Zotus. He traveled through the, that area, preaching the good news in all the cities until he reached Caesarea. Caesarea. The gospel reading for today comes from John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And this is where we get to the vine. <laughs> I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper. He moves any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit and in this way prove that you are my disciples. God is still speaking. Well, we've already had a wonderful sermon this morning and entertaining too. Prior to becoming the conference minister here in Vermont, I worked at the national setting of our church in Cleveland. Among other things, I was the liaison both to our United Church of Christ seminaries and also to the locally based schools of ministry. And I discovered in my second year that part of my responsibilities was to relate to the School of Ministry in Hawaii. I was so excited. <laughs> Better yet, the meeting was in February. White sand, beautiful clear ocean, tropical temperatures. And then my spouse, Peg, said, before you go, you need to read Missioners Hawaii. So I did. And there, undeniably, in those pages, I learned about a colonialism that began with missionaries from the congregational churches in New England. These folks were faithful. They thought they were following a gospel mandate. And they went to Hawaii to convert Hawaiians to Christianity and to civilize the heathens, which essentially means make them more like us. 
It was quite the story. One of the things that happened for me is that I, I really understood, possibly for the first time, that when Paul Sherry was the general minister and president of the United Church of Christ, he went to Hawaii and he issued a formal verbal apology. That was in 1993. There was also financial redress as a concrete recognition of harm done with multi-generational impact. So every time I, um, I think about celebrating um, various cultures, I remember that it's, it's bittersweet. Um, so it's a legacy that we need to remember. And yet, a lot of beautiful siblings that we have in Christ to celebrate and raise up. When I went to Hawaii for the meeting, I learned so much. When I stepped off the plane, I immediately recognized that I was in the minority. I was surrounded by people who were Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Samoan, Marshallese, um, whom I, Native Hawaiian, and many others, from, particularly from Micronesia. That was a new experience for me. When I ordered breakfast the following morning, my breakfast came with a scoop of rice and a slice of, of Spam. Do any of you know why they use Spam so much? What? Exactly. Spam is tinned, it doesn't spoil. And so for, for a while it was the meat that you could get in Hawaii. So I found this experience exhilarating and humbling, I would say. And yet there were things that felt very familiar to me. Um, I was invited on Sunday for Sunday morning services by Lori Yamashiro, who is the administrator of the Hawaii Conference, to join her at her Japanese church. So off I went, and as I walked in the door, I was greeted by church ladies and given a crocheted lei. And I started laughing, because it's like, of course they would crochet <laughs> leis. And I thought, how, um, how reminiscent of something that would have been done, probably not a lay, but something crocheted um, in any of our churches. And yet there were also a lot of things that I hadn't anticipated that were, that were unfamiliar. So I went to the meeting of the board of directors of the Hawaii uh, School of Ministry, and I was sitting around the table in the uh, uh, Hawaii conference office and the meeting started and within a few minutes I realized I didn't understand a word that was being said. Now the meeting was conducted in English but there were so many words that were being used and understood around that table that I had never heard. I was very fortunate that my friend Keikapa Lee was sitting next to me and he very quietly started to explain these phrases. They were all from the native, uh, from uh, the indigenous Hawaii culture that had been incorporated into uh, life in the Hawaii uh, conference. And so I learned all sorts of things, including I learned that my friend Keikapa was the Papa Makua. I said, what's that? And it means he, was, he had been chosen as the head of the native Hawaiian churches. So that's a role that he had for a while. But if the language was strange to me, I think the purpose of the meeting was even stranger. I kept waiting for them to get to the point. And instead, they were doing what my friend said was talking story. You're you're using this meeting as a chance to tell stories? 
Absolutely. Because in a culture shaped by Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander influences, the priority is relationship. The bedrock of all that is said and done to reach, is to reach a level of understanding, respect, and love. And to do that, you must commit to listening to one another's stories. And now, we are back to the vine and the branches. In the Gospel of John, there are se uh, seven uh, times when Jesus says, I am the. And if you were in church last Sunday, I bet you did Good Shepherd Sunday. So that was, I am the Good Shepherd. I am, I am the light of the world. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. I am um, the bread of life. Yeah, so there's seven of them all together. And the one uh, that we heard read today is the seventh and final of the I am uh, uh, sayings that all introduce us to aspects of who Jesus is. So today, I am the vine and you are the branches. This is set in the Gospel of John in a section that's part of um, what theologians call the farewell discourse. Essentially, it means that he was saying goodbye to his disciples, mostly. And so as he talked about going away, as you can imagine, his disciples were anxious and sad and beginning to feel bereft. So he gave them the metaphor of the vine and the branches of being connected, belonging, and bearing fruit from that relationship. A wonderful collective known as the SALT Project um, put it this way that I found helpful. The gist of the metaphor is not as is too often read in Christian circles today. If you want to live, you better stay connected to me or else, but rather, don't worry, we'll be together. Your life itself and all its fruit will testify to our ongoing intimacy. Take heart, I will be with you and our companionship will be even closer than it is now. Today we walk side by side, but in the days to come, I will live in you and you will live in me. For me, one of the gifts that I learned, probably not as well as I need to, from Asian and Pacific Islander cultures is that it's possible to shift from the tyranny of I to an understanding of the importance of we. As part of my culture, I tend to look at things through my own lens. Is this gonna benefit me? You know, is, do I feel like my rights are being violated? Me. But those are not the questions that most Pacific Islanders and Asian Americans ask first. They ask, will this benefit the community? And that is the more important value in most of those cultures. The vine and the branches. You know, you could say that somebody might be a branch on the vine and decide that they're really not interested in bearing fruit. Well, but when a decision is made like that, it doesn't just affect that person. It affects the entire community. It affects all the branches. We are all connected one to another, together and perhaps only together we produce the rich, wonderful, varied fruits of our relationship with Christ. And fruits that are so needed in this world of ours. 
I loved seeing the variety of fruit that was brought today because it did remind me of all the ways in which we connect to God and to one another and how important that is that we have experiences beyond our own little slice of things uh, to look at as well. So as we continue this morning uh, to sing and celebrate Pam's Sunday, Pacific Islander Asian American Ministry Sunday, may we be open to learning new ways of being in relationship together. As members of the branches attached to the vine, we become more and more a part of the web of loving relationships that is our being, the place where we live. I thank God for the branches of cultures differing from my own and our own. It makes the world so much more interesting. So I give thanks for my siblings who are native and indigenous and all those who live on Pacific Islands and wherever they live. And my challenge, I think, to you is next time you are talking with someone or in a meeting, why not talk story for a while? Amen. This next piece is a Japanese hymn, and it can be found in your hymnal, the United Methodist Hymnal, number 552, if you'd like to follow along with the words, because we are going to be singing to organ, so the words are important, and we want to make sure you could hear them.
As we enter into a time of prayer, I invite you, if somebody needs the microphone, I invite you to uh, share your, uh, your press out loud and at the end of it say, this is my prayer and we will all respond, this is our prayer. Let us be together in prayer. Good morning. This morning in um, Charlotte, North Carolina, the United Methodist Church continues their global meeting. It is the General Conference of the United Methodist Church uh, started last Tuesday and will continue through, I believe, May 3rd. Um, I would just like prayers for the United Methodist Church as we attempt to live into being God's neighbors. And so often it is difficult to legislate to order our lives in such a way that reflect God's goodness. And my prayers have been for this general conference that has been um, postponed because of COVID, postponed because of travelers who could not come from foreign lands into our country due to visas and other issues. So just continued prayers for the delegates as they continue to gather and seek the best way forward for the United Methodist Church and its global reach that allows us to see ministries as we have today, to see ministries and how they impact throughout the world. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Yesterday I had the opportunity to um, partake in the bake sale at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and the donations obviously are for the food shelf. And again, it was a great joy to see the diversity throughout the world and this was a international bake sale with sweets and um, delights from around the world. So I give thanks to our brothers and sisters throughout the world and for their ministry and for the ministry that continues, we've all seen Jason running out with the food. You may know Jason is our representative to the food shelf. So I give thanks to all those globally and all those locally who continue to lift up the ministries that allow us to bear God's fruit into our societies. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Additionally, I'll lift up. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> Additionally, I'll lift up the places of war around the world. And yesterday at the bake sale, we spoke with a Bosnian who spoke of her time in watching a country torn apart. And as we reflect on the places of war around the globe, may we be interested in the best ways for our communities to move forward. And may we be bearing the gifts of peace to all these areas. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. <laughs> I have a uh, joy. This year, this uh, Special Olympics is going to be doing uh, bocce. We haven't done it in a while at UVM, and we're going to have it at UVM this year, and we get to stay overnight. Oh, nice. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. Julianne asked for prayers for her niece who was in the hospital on Friday and her need for support in controlling her diet and health. This is Julianne's prayer. This is our prayer. So I'm going to continue the Fruits of the Vine theme this morning. Um, we had the opportunity as a family to begin to till our soil yesterday and plant seeds um, for fruits that will be born later in the season. I ask for prayers for a good uh, gardening season, a bountiful harvest, and that um, those of us that can uh, to grow and, the, and to share 
with our neighbors who grow nearby and, and purchase their goods and, um, and that there may be uh, beneficial crops for all uh, in the world and in our region. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. I'd like to take a moment to offer up prayers for the teachers who are going back to school after having a week of vacation and the students and the families who have enjoyed a probably much needed break. And this is the home stretch. So I'd like to lift up everybody in education, including the students, as we wrap up our school year. This is, our prayer. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. And let's remember to pray for Jen and her family as they attend the memorial for a family member. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. All right. Let us continue to pray. Gracious God, when we gather together with one another, we are a web of loving relationships. And so we thank you for the space in this sanctuary to lift up the people and situations and world situations for prayer. We lift them to you. Thank you when there are joys also lifted up. God be with us whether we, whether we say our prayers out loud or write them on our screen or have them in our hearts with perhaps not even the words to name them. Hear all of our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus the Vine, who taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we offer the fruits of our labor for the betterment of the world. Let us share our offerings.
let us say our offering prayer together. Dear God, holy vine grower, you are love. The offerings we share today are the fruit of that love. Help us to live out your commandment to love our siblings around the world. Remind us that we are all branches on the same vine, in need of one another, entwined with one another, and reaching out to you, our Son and our Source. Amen. This is what happens when you have a rookie in the pulpit. <laughs> Are there announcements that, uh, that we would like to share this morning? Do we need a microphone? My wife, who's downstairs with the children, asked me to announce the family event night and potluck that is hap knows potluck happening Friday, May 10th from 5.30 to 7.30. We will start with a potluck meal together, so bring something yummy to share, and we will be making gift packages to bring home to give to someone you love. Please RSVP to mice at ucu.church. I'll put this up in the back so you can see it. With your name and number of family attending by Tuesday the 7th so we have enough supplies. <laughs> and also you've heard a couple times already but uh, next Sunday we have the chance to lift our hearts to God, we'll put our hands to work. We have a few little deals to do and clean up around and spruce up the church, so it's going to be a shortened worship service, and we'll be doing some projects around the church. So don't come with your best clothes on, because I'm going to get them dirty. <laughs> Thank you very much, and that's next Sunday, the 5th. Oh, sorry. Well, also next Sunday, uh, Marge and I remind you that it's the Cots Walk, and Marge and I will be walking while the rest of you are here working, I guess. Um, and um, I got in the mail um, a little a postcard, and this was written by someone um, who had gone to this uh, the Spectrum. Um, warming shelter and Spectrum is another group in Burlington and St. Albans that does a lot to help people that are homeless and the quote has really stuck in my mind it said the, the best thing you can do for a complete stranger is to give them a place to go when they have no place to go So Jason wanted me to mention that meal bags are being put together downstairs and people are welcome to come down and watch or participate, I believe. Kathy uh, asked me to announce that there's delicious food available for fellowship after church. Which includes taste testing some of those fruits that I brought. That's right. Uh, this next upcoming week, I think, is uh, Women in the Word is starting a new study on the Gospel of Mark. Uh, we mm -hmm. meet on Wednesday mornings at, via Zoom at 8 a.m. So if anyone is interested, um, I'm going to be leading this for the first time, so, <laughs> so 
So um, it's going to be really, really great. Um, so if anyone is interested in joining, um, just reach out and we'll get you the link to um, join the Zoom on Wednesday mornings. Thank you. Hi, good morning. My name is Jason Crooks. I'm our church's food shelf rep, and I wanted to invite all of you to continue to bring in tuna, mac and cheese, peas, and Ritz crackers, and we'll continue to build meal bags. The distribution for May isn't until the 18th, so we've got uh, two, three more sat Sundays uh, to build meal bags. I wanted to invite you all to build them today, but the Sunday friends completed them all. <laughs> we were supposed to make 40, we ended up making 60. Oh, that's great. Thanks. That's great. And before we have our, oops, is there anybody else? Okay. And see, I can see you all know the usual suspects for this. <laughs> Before our closing hymn, I also want to express my appreciation for the music for today. Um, it's been absolutely fabulous, and it really has taken us uh, sort of around the world, and that's what that helps as only music can. So thank you for that, all of you. Our closing hymn um, is in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 523.
receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you both now and always. Amen, amen, and amen. And please greet one another as you leave with the word aloha.